Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tastytutes.com. In this tutorial I will show you how to apply and manage reflections in Adobe Photoshop. I will be using CS5 for this tutorial but this technique can easily be applied in earlier versions. First I'm going to demonstrate how to create a reflection for a single object and then I will further demonstrate how to apply reflections to a group composition. This effect is popular with text but for this tutorial, I will be using these bottles I have sourced and cut out previously. If you want to apply this effect to text, simply follow along and manage the text as I am about to manage the bottle images. So let's get started with a single object. So first, let's take a quick look at what we're about to create. Let's pull up my Layers tab here. And this is an example I prepared earlier. And as you can see here in the Layers panel, this consists of four layers. The Object layer, two Shadow layers, and the Reflection layer. Let's bring these back. It's important to note that when creating reflections, we must consider the Shadow layer. After all, the object is sitting on a surface, and as well as a reflection, there will be a subtle shadow. This will give our reflected object a more all-round authentic appearance. On the reflection layer, there is an opacity mask applied. If you're not sure what this is, I will show you how to create this very shortly. So let's go ahead and create this. So I'm just gonna open up a document that I've prepared earlier. And what I have here is my object on its separate layer. And I have cut this out. And we can see that I've cut this out by showing a colored block behind. And we're going to start by duplicating this layer. So I'm going to come over to my Layers panel and click on the bottle one, and I'm going to right click and duplicate layer. I'm going to call this Reflection. Okay. And then I'm going to come to Edit, Transform, and Flip Vertical. And then I'm just going to move this down into place, just moving it finally with the arrow keys. And uh, I'm going to put this reflection behind the bottle. So I'm going to click and hold on the layer and just drag it underneath the bottle. Now to create that reflection effect on this object I've just duplicated, I'm going to apply what is known as a opacity mask. To do this, I must make sure that the reflection layer is selected in my layers panel. I'm going to come down to the bottom of my layers panel and the third button from the left is the add layer mask. I'm going to click that once and what you'll notice is in the layer a white square icon will appear next to the layer. With that selected I'm going to come over to my menu and where the paint bucket normally resides I'm going to click and hold and I'm going to select the gradient tool. And now I'm going to come back over to this object and I'm going to click and hold and just drag up and that's created a nice reflection effect. Now if that is too bold for us, we can change this. So let's come up to the opacity and change it to 50% and that will create a more subtle reflection. And that is looking just fine. But to finish off this image and give it an overall more authentic look and appearance, I'm going to introduce that subtle shadow I touched on earlier on. And to do this, first we must make sure that our reflection layer is selected because we want to create a new layer on top of this. I'm going to press Command Shift N, shortcut to create a new layer, and I'm going to call this Shadow 1. And simply, I'm going to come over to my menu and grab the brush tool. And I'm going to get a brush which is around about 100. And I'm just going to freehand it, and I'm just going to get a feathered brush. Make sure you get a feathered brush. I'm just going to draw a line underneath our object, just like that. And I can reposition the shadow using the arrow keys. And I'm going to change the opacity, because that's looking a bit dark, to around about 70%. Come to the opacity in the top of my layers panel, change that to 70%. And now I'm going to create the second part of our shadow. Again, we're going to create a new layer, Command Shift N, and I'm going to call this Shadow, Shadow 2. And we're going to come over to the menu and we're going to select our elliptical marquee tool. I'm just going to draw a wide, thin ellipse. And I'm going to come over to the 
paint bucket. At the moment it's on gradient, so I'm going to click and hold and pull up my paint bucket tool. I'm just going to fill that with a black. And I'm going to deselect by pressing Command D and using the arrow keys. I'm just going to move this into place. I'm just going to move that underneath the bottle there. Then I'm going to come up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to apply a blur around, let's try 10 pixels. OK. And then I'm going to come over to my menu once again. And I'm going to select the Eraser tool. And I want to get a bigger brush, so I'm going to come up, push my brush up to around, let's say, around 200. I'll do. And I'm going to change the opacity to about 50%. That'll do nicely. And then we're going to come over to the ellipse and just slightly delete a little bit away. So we're going to give it a little bit of a gradient effect so it's not too bold. And again, using the arrow keys, I can move that into place. And that will just be a little spin-off shadow. It just gives it a little bit more of an authentic appearance. So this is how you create a reflection for a single object. But what if I want to create a composition with reflections for multiple objects? Let's move on to the next example. Here we have a composition which I created earlier and as you can see here in the layers panel this consists of six objects on their separate layers. I have cut these out prior this tutorial so be sure to cut out your objects nice and clean before beginning your reflection effect. So now we want to apply a reflection to these objects let's use the same process as earlier. Let's duplicate these layers to do that, I can select the top layer. By holding Shift, I can click on the bottom layer, and that will select multiple layers. Now, if I right-click and select Duplicate Layers, these, this will create a quick duplication of these layers. And they're all selected there. And you can see that in the layers, there is copy after each layer to let you know that they are indeed copies. So, if I come to Edit and Transform, and flip vertical. I can move these layers down into position and what becomes apparent is that they are on top of the other layers and if we look in our layers panel we can see just why and that's because they are on top. So as they are all selected we are going to click and drag them below the other objects so now they are underneath and also what is apparent is they are out of line. So we are going to quickly rectify this. And to do that, very easily, we can put our mouse over an object and by right clicking, it will bring up a list of what is underneath. So we have our bottle two copy, select that. By using my arrow keys, I can just move this up into place. The same with bottle five, move that up into place. And also bottle six, move that up into place and bottle four and we can do that with every bottle just to make sure we are happy with its position. Okay so now all our reflection objects are in place now it's time to add our reflection effect. In the last example we were dealing with just a single object but here we have multiple objects so how are we going to apply the opacity mask to the entire group? Well let me show you how. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to select all of our reflection objects. To do that, we're going to click on the top layer. By pressing Shift and holding down, we can select multiple layers. And, and then I'm going to press Command G. And this is going to group all these objects together. And I'm quickly going to double select on the name of the group, just to call it Reflection. And now, because the objects are grouped, we can apply our opacity mask to the entire group. To do this, make sure your group is selected, as you can see here in the Layers panel. We're going to come down to the bottom of the Layers panel, and you can see the button we used earlier on, Add Layer Mask. Let's click that, and you can see that it is now applying an opacity mask to the entire group. If we come over to our menu, and click and hold on the paint bucket, again we're going to pull up our gradient tool, and make sure you have the colours black and white selected. 
and we're just going to click and hold and draw a gradient and you can see exactly what's happening. We've created a nice reflection there and if you wish we can change the opacity of the whole group. We can come up to our opacity property here with the whole group selected and we can just toggle the visibility of the opacity. Let's go with something about 80% and that'll do just fine. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to add a shadow. The final step in order to get that authentic look. Now I want to share with you a little technique. So let's zoom in a little bit. What I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to select on the reflection group and I'm going to press Command Shift N because I want to create a new layer just on top of the reflection. So I'm going to call this Shadow 1. Okay, and I'm going to come over and grab my brush. And my brush is set to 100 that we used earlier on, but I want something a little bit smaller. So let's look at something around the 70 mark or maybe even the 50 mark. Yeah, let's go with that for now. Okay, and a little trick I've learned recently. If you press and hold shift and you draw, you can draw in straight lines. So if you wish to draw some straight lines in Photoshop, just click and hold shift. You can do that very easily. So I'm just going to undo all that quickly. The reason I'm showing you that is because we're going to make the shadow for these objects in one quick swoop. So I'm going to start from the edge here, and by pressing shift, I'm just going to hold. I'm just going to click some lines, so you can see exactly what I'm doing. By holding shift and clicking, I can get a nice straight line. Move that to the end. So now we've got a nice black shadow effect. And that's looking pretty dark, so if we come up to the opacity, we can toggle this until we can get something a little bit lighter. And by using the arrow keys, I can just select the shadow and move it up a little bit until I'm happy with that. Let's zoom out a little bit and take a look at that. There you go. It's a very, very subtle shadow. Let's toggle the visibility of that. So that's before and that's after. So we've got that nice little shadow there. And finally, we want to add the second shadow just to add a little bit more. So I'm going to create a new layer, Command Shift N, and let's call this Shadow 2. And we're going to zoom in just a little bit so we can get a closer look at what we're about to do. And I'm going to come over to the menu and pull up my elliptical marquee tool. Like earlier, I'm going to create myself a wide, flat ellipse and grab my paint bucket and fill that with black. Command D to deselect press a V to pull up my selection tool so I can move this around and I'm going to come to filter blur Gaussian blur and let's try 10 okay and I can move this into place and I'm going to grab my eraser tool and with the opacity set to about 50% it's going to tweak our shadow slightly tweak it ever so slightly and move that into place. Zoom out a little bit. That's looking quite nice. Now if I press V to pull up my selection tool, I'm going to press and hold Alt, and by holding Alt, I can click and drag, and I will make a quick duplication of that shadow layer. And if I move that around, I can reposition these under some of the other objects, and apply the shadow effect to some of the other objects. And if we think some of them are a little dark, we can select them in the layers panel and just tweak the opacity slightly. So let's zoom out a little bit and take a look at that. And that is looking pretty good, which leaves the last task of organizing our layers in the layers panel here. I'm just going to select on the top shadow by pressing shift and holding. I can select all the shadow layers, press command G to group them. And, and by double clicking on the group, I can name this shadow. And I'm going to do the same with our bottle objects group. And I'm going to call these bottle objects. Okay. 
And that is our finished composition. That is how you create and manage reflections in Photoshop. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. If you did, go ahead and subscribe to the channel now, as there will be lots more videos like this coming soon. And if you're interested, hop over to my website at tastytutes.com. You can see more videos just like this there. And from there, you can follow me on Twitter, where I'll be talking about various creative topics. So I hope to see you there. So have fun, guys, and I will see you next time.